Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Tom again. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at programming languages. So, programming languages. Programming languages are, well, they are what we use in order to write code. Okay, and what is code? Well, code is just going to be a file with a whole bunch of stuff written in it. And the stuff that's written in it, it could just be just basic words. Um, it could be things like equations. Or it could be, I don't know, symbols of some sort. Okay. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we can write this. Just like languages in the real world, we have Chinese, French, Spanish, German, a whole bunch of different languages. Uh, code can be written in a whole bunch of different languages as well. And some of the languages you might be familiar with, you might recognize, are things like Java. Uh, maybe you know C++, or maybe you've heard of Objective-C, or maybe you've heard of JavaScript. Now Java and JavaScript, totally different languages. Uh, what we're going to be using in this class is Python. So these are all languages, and each of these languages, you can actually do the same thing in each one of these, but you do it in a different way. Just like if I want to say hello to somebody in French or German, or Ch Japanese or Chinese or any other language, I'm going to do it in a different way. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look actually at some real programming languages. So this website, helloworldcollection.de, uh, is pretty interesting because it has the program Hello World written in, well, as you can see over here on the left, hundreds of different languages. So each one of these languages does it in a little bit different way. So let's take a look at C. Well, let's take a look at C++. Here's C++. It says include iostream.h main has a, a bracket symbol here and then it prints something out and returns zero and another bracket here okay so that's c plus plus now let's take a look at python or we can each take a look at java first take a look at java first here's java class hello world static public void main and then system dot out dot print line hello world and now let's take a look at python what we're going to be using in this class and specifically Python 3. Okay, so here we go. Uh, print, hello world. Okay, well, that seems a lot easier than the other languages, right? It's only one line here. Why don't people use Python 3 for everything? It's, it's so much simple, so much more simple to write hello world. Well, every language has a different purpose and every language does something a little bit different. And some languages are more powerful in that they can do a whole bunch of different things. Some languages are more verbose, meaning they use more words to do a lot of different things. And some languages are less verbose, meaning they use less wording to do different things. And there's there's trade-offs between everything, okay? So some languages might be easier, some languages might be harder, but no language is really perfect and no language is used for everything, okay? So every language has a purpose and a reason of why it's been written that way. Now, languages change over time. You'll notice there's Python 2 and Python 3, and C++ and Java and all those other languages, they're constantly being updated and being changed to kind of reflect the changes in technology. And actually, uh, usually they're used, usually when you get uh, a new language, they've tried to make things more concise or they shorten them so it's easier uh, to write code. So Usually you go from more verbose, which means more words to do something, to less verbose or less words to do something. And that's kind of, uh, it, it's as a programmer, it saves you a lot of typing in, to do all that. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these other ones, and then we're going to talk about why we might have these here. So this, uh, this is this Quartz Composer. This is actually a visual language. So you just create these boxes, you click, you drag things. Now... This is pretty good uh, for certain programs. It could get very difficult for a large program to try to visualize everything. 
Um, you take a look at this here. This is one program. All of these uh, little lines here start all the way down to here, and then a jump statement. That's quite a lot just to print hello world. I want to point out one other thing up here because we're going to talk about this very soon, and it's something called Assembler. So if I take a look at Assembler Intel, you're going to see this is the Hello World program written in Assembler. Assembler is about the, really is, is the lowest that you go as a programming language. And what I mean by lowest is it's the closest to your hardware. So I'm going to jump back here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, what we have is a different, there's different levels of languages. So you have uh, high level languages. And high level languages are all these things we just talked about. Python, JavaScript, and all of that. Okay. Uh, you have, now, I don't really think there's such a thing as a mid-level language, but I'm going to put it here anyways. This is a, a mid-level language might be something like C or maybe Fortran. Now these are older languages. Um, these languages are, oh man, I'm like probably over 40 years old. And they were around when the first uh, computers really were created. C, for, for C came around in the 70s, Fortran, I'm not exactly sure. But they are very old languages and they have a lot of the high level stuff that these languages do, Python, JavaScript, and things like that, and of course C++ for C, but they also, and you can probably see where this is going here, have a lot of low level features. Now, a low level language is assembler. Okay, and every computer has, or computer architecture has its own type of assembly language. So when you get a, you buy a PC or you buy a Mac, it's probably different depending on what they're built on, the hardware they're built on. They could have a different assembly languages. So uh, your phone or your computer uses a different assembly or assembler language in order to build stuff. Okay? Now, if you want to program, you're gonna use a high level language because you get a lot of the benefits of the mid and low level out of the high level and it doesn't require you to type a whole lot of stuff and it's not quite as confusing. If you want access to low level, you're probably going to use C more often than you would use assembler. Assembler looks like this. So this is very confusing and we're going to talk more later on about kind of what this means. Uh, but you see, for example, the assembler Itanium, this is what it takes in order to print Hello World. That is a lot of stuff to print Hello World. Same thing with the MIPS and all of these other assembler languages. They take a lot of typing just to type out Hello World to the screen. So assembly language, very low level, takes a lot more code in order to do something. C, uh, Fortran, mid-level, and high-level ones don't take as much code in order to write something. Okay. So this is just kind of a general overview of programming languages. You just got to remember that it is a document when you type it, just like any other document. And oftentimes it's, you know, more than one document, but it's going to be uh, just files that you can read like anything else. All right. And we're going to talk about how you can make this, this written stuff, into something that the computer can read in the next couple videos. Alright, so I'll see you in the next video.